Hi, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and today I'm going to start a set of experiments for my slicer shootout. So let's go ahead and get started. Several years ago, I ran across this journal article comparing the accuracy of 3D printing slicer soft. What's cool about it is they compared Simplify 3D, Cura, and Slicer. For their experiment, if I scroll down, they designed two different printed parts, a phone holder, and then a medallion with text, and then printed it on their homemade low-cost 3D printer. And each slicer used set standards, so they used set parameters in order to print everything. So each slicer used the same parameters, same settings, same models. And then once they printed, they went ahead and did a series of measurements. And then looking at those series of measurements and the errors associated with them, they were able to narrow down what the best slicer was. In 2019, they found the best slicer, if I scroll back up, to be Simplify 3D. Now Simplify 3D is still out there, but it's a paid piece of software. In my case, I'm not gonna pay for slicing software. So I have three different slicers that I typically use and I'm interested in. I'm interested in Cura, Prusa Slicer, and then also a new one that's around Orca Slicer, which is based on Bamboo Studio, which is based on Prusa Slicer, which is based on several other things. So I really like these three slicing software and I can never decide which one I want to do. So what I'm going to do is reproduce this experiment in a series of videos with 3D models using the same 3D printer, the same PLA, and then the same settings across the board. So let me go ahead and describe what I'm going to do. So I mentioned I'm interested in these three slicers, Cura, Prusa Slicer, and Orca Slicer. Now since this experiment was originally run using PLA, and PLA I believe is the most commonly used filament, I went over to Amazon, and looking at their best sellers list, I can see Overture PLA is one of the top sellers. So I've gone ahead and purchased a roll of light gray Overture PLA. So I'll be using that as the PLA in my experiment. Now, rather than use these original designs of a medallion and a phone holder, I don't really feel like those are representative and most of the 3D printing community won't be familiar with these. So instead, what I'm going to use is the 3D Benchy. Now, what's cool about the 3D Benchy, if you've never been to their website, they actually have an extensive PDF that has all the various measurements and things to look at on the Benchy. And if we look at this, there's approximately 12 different measurements or at least 12 different measurements that can be taken. So I'll be using many of these measurements in my experiment. And then lastly, I'll be downloading the Benchy from Thingiverse, which is linked on the Benchy website. And I'll also be printing with the recommended settings that are listed on the 3D Benchin website. The printer I'll be using for my experiments will be my Creality CR6SE. Now you might say this is a little bit more of an obscure printer. I could do this on the Ender 3 v 2 I wanna do it on the CR6 because I found over time, the CR6SE tends to give me the most consistent prints. And because of that consistency, I feel like that's better for this set of experiments. Now, the CR6, I'll be printing using Octoprint. So I have this all connected to Octoprint. And my plan is to print three Benchies per slicer and then take measurements and do averages. And by doing it this way, I hope that I can eliminate any crazy results where I had one print that was a problem. So the next steps, I'm gonna go ahead and set up new profiles in each of the slicers and then make sure all the settings across the board are the same in each slicer. Slice the benchies, and then I'll start printing. Now I'm gonna show you the changes I've made to Cura, and I'll do the same for the other slicers. Create the new profile that I'm calling CR6 Benchy, 
everything's pretty much the default. Some quick changes I made is I've changed the wall thickness instead of two layers. It's now three, so it's a little thicker. I've changed the infill density to 10%, the infill pattern to cubic, which should be in both the other slicers. I'm going to do my printing temperatures, 205 and 65 for the bed temp. I'm also going to do the initial printing temp as 210. Now, in the case of my CR6, I have better results when I do a flow of 95%. So I'm going to go ahead and edit and change that in all three slicers as well. I'm going to leave the print speed at 50, which is equal to the references over on the Benchy website. So it's up to 50 millimeters per second, and then a travel speed of 150 millimeters per second. And so I'm using those same settings over here in Cura. Scrolling down again, the retraction distance in the default is 6.5 and a retraction speed of 25. I'll go ahead and check those speeds and make sure those are set in the other slicers as well. And lastly, I just wanna point out that I'm gonna go ahead and leave this leave the bed adhesion as skirt for right now, although I may wind up changing that to brim if I wind up having some adhesion issues. But these are all the settings and save that again so all my, my changes are saved and this way I can just rerun the experiment over and over again. My plan is to run one Benchy in Cura, one in Prusa, one in Orca Slicer, maybe not in that order, but those three to round one, round two, and then round three. So I'm not going to run Cura, do one, two, and three models. I'm going to break it up by doing each of the slicers in between. And I'll go ahead and outline this in a spreadsheet and show you next week when we go over the results. And attach to this video at least one time lapse showing a Benchy being printed, and then print the rest off screen. Now I've successfully printed one Benchy and I'm going to go ahead and print the rest. I'll mark each Benchy as to which slicer and which iteration it is. And then I'll continue printing throughout this week and next week we'll go over the results. And hopefully if you have any questions, you can post them in the comments. Well, if you like what I'm doing, please give me a like and I look forward to working with you and talking to you again in the future. Thanks for joining me today. This is Mike from Minimal 3DP. I want to thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please post them below, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Feel free to email me as well at minimal3dp at gmail.com. If you like what I'm doing, please feel free to share and give me a like, and I look forward to talking to you again in the future. Thanks, and happy 3D printing. <music>